Hi, welcome back to the channel. On the last video, I showed you how to do a double cut mirror seam on a solid surface material. But this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a freehand seam. It's gonna seem a little weird, but it works really, really good. So let's get started. So first, let me show you what we're gonna to need to get started. We have our two pieces of material here. Gonna need a router. I use a 3 8 bit on this. You're gonna need six clamps. And you're gonna need a strip of, of wood. This is eighth inch door skin material. And we're gonna slide this piece underneath the center of the seam. Oh, and you're also gonna need some some spacers to equally space the two pieces of material apart. So these are gonna go inside of here, like that. So let me set up the camera so I can set all this up and I'll freehand this seam and then show you what that looks like. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of door skin directly underneath the seam. And that's so that the router bit can ride right in the middle of that door skin, but it also brings the two pieces of material up just a little bit to create a taper on the bottom side of the joint. And then when we pull these two pieces together, the leading edge right here will be nice and tight. So that's the purpose of putting the wood, and also it helps it so we don't cut into our stretchers or our, our support pieces. So uh, let me, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these little pieces in here. Oh, we gotta put that in there. This is the first thing. I'm gonna put this underneath there. That's the door skin. And we're gonna put that directly underneath the seam. Now we're gonna take these spacers right here and we're gonna put them underneath the seam, or in between the seam, so that we can evenly space the seam so that when the router bit travels through there, there's equal spacing. It makes for a better consistent cut. So just put those in there and then pull your seam together, or pull your pieces together. Now, I like to line up one edge here so it's nice and straight because once you see this seam, it's going to be squirrely. It's not a straight seam. We're going to freehand this thing. So it's basically all over the place as you pull it through this gap right here. So after that's all done and you apply the glue, sometimes it's hard to tell where this is lined up. So what I do is I pull them tight like this and then I take a little straight edge and I just push the pieces back and forth like this to get it lined up. That way when we glue it, it makes it much easier. So now we've got these two pieces together. We got them spaced exactly what we want them. We've lined up one edge. Now I'm gonna clamp it and we're gonna clamp one twice here and we're gonna clamp it once here so these pieces don't slide back and forth like this and they won't twist like this. Now I'm going to take this plunge router with the 3 8 single flute bit in it and I'm going to adjust the height of the bit. I like to set the height of the router bit, the bottom of it to right in the middle of the piece of door skin. That way, again, it doesn't cut the stretchers that I'm using to support my material. And I wanna make sure that it cuts all the way through so that I don't have to sand anything on the bottom and the seam will be done. So let me, let me plug this in and I'm gonna slowly, the idea here is with this bit, it's gonna cut a 16th of an inch off of each side because it's a 3 8 bit and we have a quarter inch gap. But the idea is it's going to take the path of least resistance. So even though the router bit's gonna be going back and forth like this, it will always go down the center of that gap. That's why you want the gap to be consistent the whole way down. And you do not want the gap to be really small. You want it to just barely cut off um, a little bit from each side of that seam. The other thing is don't hold the router too tight in your hands. 
you gotta hold on to it obviously, but you're just gonna lightly pull it through the seam and always start away from you and pull it through this way. If you push it, it seems to, to not quite follow the gap quite right. So let me show you what I'm talking about and then we'll see what the seam looks like. So I cut nice and slow through there, and you can see that I was real nice and consistent with the speed, and then you just control it when it comes through the end, because sometimes it wants to veer off at an angle. Okay, so here's a close-up of the seam, right here, and I'm going to start pushing it together. And I hope you can see that on camera, how tight it fits. It's absolutely perfect. And it seems as though doing this method is the fastest way because you don't need a straight edge. You can just pull it right through and it almost locks together. As long as you, you put a straight edge on this side so that you can line it up when you put the glue in there. It's just absolutely amazing. So I hope this video helped. I know it's uh, not a common way to cut a seam, but give it a try. Hope this video helped. I'll see you on the next one.